Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Mikey and in today's video, I'm basically just going to describe how I use my iPad Pro. I have no idea why I just turned it off, but how I use my iPad Pro in school as a pre-med student. So I got this iPad about a year and a half ago. So I got it in um, September 2019. So that's about, yeah, about a year and a half ago. I have been using it and I've been seeing the efficiency it actually makes on your studies, whether that's writing down lectures, reviewing lectures, or re-annotating notes, you know, listening to the lectures again. It makes things so much quicker. Now, I know a lot of you might be thinking, you know, the iPad is really expensive, I can't afford it, and that's really the only downside when it comes to the iPad. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to describe how you could actually get the iPad for cheaper without paying full price for it. I actually told some of my friends about this. One of my friends, um, he actually ended up getting an iPad for cheaper, I think like $200 cheaper, by using this method. So I'm going to start by giving you guys a quick structure of what I'm going to discuss in the video. So the first thing I'm going to discuss is convenience of the iPad and why so many people love it. Then I'm going to discuss how I actually take notes on my iPad and how I import all the documents in very quickly. Then after that, I'm also going to discuss how you can use other apps alongside Notability. So I use Notability primarily because it's the most direct feel like a regular piece of paper. And I don't like OneNotes or GoodNotes because first of all, OneNotes is a limited horizontal scroll, which I don't like. And GoodNotes, you know, user interface isn't as nice as Notability. And that's kind of why I basically don't use it. Finally, I'm going to discuss how you can actually get your hands on an iPad for a cheaper price. Now, the first reason why so many people love the iPad is because of its convenience and its portability. Think about it. When you go to school, you have a backpack, you know, you have a couple textbooks for class, you have your pencil case, your water bottle, your glasses, your headphones, your notes, your a bunch of highlighters, your pencils. You have all that stuff carrying on your back and it ends up, you know, it could cause back problems. It's just very, very heavy, right? Now, when you have an iPad, all you literally have to take is your iPad that you could have your textbook, you could have your pencil, right? Because with the Apple Pencil, you could also have your notes, you could have your lecture slides, you could also, you know, you can go on Netflix, you could do so much with the iPad. This is essentially your backpack. All you have to really take is your iPad and your laptop when you go to school, right? So when I go to school or when I go to my friend's house or I go to the library, all I really take is this, right? I put my iPad in it, I put my laptop in it, and I also put my charger in it. So this is literally all I have to carry. And that's why so many people love it. If you're on the train or if you're on a bus, if you're commuting, or if you're really doing anything, you can literally pull out your iPad and start studying. You could pull out your iPad, start taking notes, pull out your iPad, play a game. You could really do anything with it. There's zero friction or minimal friction when it comes to the iPad versus if you have like notes, a textbook where you have to open your bag, pull into the bag, take out the notebook, find the specific page, realize that you pulled up the wrong notebook, put it back into your bag, get out the second notebook, try to find the specific page, then end up trying to find the specific thing you're looking for. Next thing you know, 30 seconds have gone by when if you did it on the iPad, I could literally just open Notability. Oh, I want to go to organic chemistry. Oh, I want to go to stereochemistry. There you go. And now we are here. See how quick that took? It took two seconds to literally find the note that I was looking for. When if I had a notebook, it could have taken me 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds. Could even take me a minute. And that's why so many people love it. Now the app I like to use with the iPad is Notability. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what Notability is right here. So once we open the Notability app, we're basically opened with this, you know, this is kind of like the home screen. And if I wanna create a new note at the top right, I just press create new note. So I formatted it where anytime I create a new note, it's gonna show lecture number. So a lot of times when I'm creating new notes, I write lecture number 23, lecture number 24. So I created it where it'll show lecture number and all I really have to do is change the lecture number. So I'll make it lecture number 45. Now the note itself, you can really basically change anything with it. So if I go up here, paper, I can make it white, I can make it light green, navy, whatever color I want. So for this case, let's say we're gonna make it white. Okay, and let's say I also wanna make it exactly like an, a piece of paper. So I know a lot of people like you know specific grid lines, a lot of people like horizontal. So let's say for this case, we're gonna do regular horizontal lines. Now, not only can I choose regular horizontal lines, I could also choose how thick they are and how, how thick they are from each other. So this one is very thick lines very thick spaces between the lines. And this one is very thin spaces between the lines. So let's choose like a regular one. Now I put this one away and when it comes to actually taking notes, it's super simple and super easy. So I press up here and I have a bunch of colors that I could choose from. Let's say in this, so red, blue, green, basically any color at all. Let's say I choose green, okay? Not only can I choose the color, but I could also choose the thickness of the pen. So let's say I choose, this is the thinnest one. So you see how thin that is. Then I choose the thickest one. And now look how thick that is. So you could change the consistency. Now there's another cool feature that has, which is basically this one right here. It's basically force sensitive. So if I write really light, okay, let's uh, force sensitive when it comes to this one. So if I write really light, you'll see that it's not very dark, but if I write really hard, it makes it darker. 
you see the difference? So you could really change up anything you want when it comes to writing. So a lot of people like highlighting their notes or writing with different pens. And you know, it's tough having to continuously buy those pens and put them in your pencil cases and to add them and to find the specific pen and to, you know, do all that stuff. But with Notability, you literally change it with a click of a button. And not only that, there's another cool feature that I like a lot. And it's this, it's like a grabber tool. I have no idea what it's called, but for this case, let's say it's a grabber. So there's two types. So the first one is the box. So the box is where it literally draw a box on top of something. So I could press on the box and style. Now I could change anything I want about it. So with regular pieces of paper and typing online, usually there's a big issue with that. Not really a big issue, but like, let's say you're writing on a piece of paper and you know, you reach the end of the piece of paper and you want to add the last word and you know, it doesn't fit in, it doesn't fit in the same line. So you try to squeeze it in, but with notability, you could basically, you know, forget about that. You could change that totally. So let's say I want to write, my name is Michael. And what that's what it's like, very fitting, see that? So I could grab it with the grabber tool, bring it to the left, make it smaller, make it larger. I could really do anything I want with it. And then I could continue, continue and add it. And this is a great feature because it just helps makes things very neat and very, very organized. Now, if I want to erase something very quickly, also very, very easy, all I really have to do is press on the eraser tool and I could click on it and it'll erase the strokes that I made, or I could erase, I could do partial erases. So it'll only erase part of it. You could also change the thickness of it. So if I want to make the eraser very thick rather than very thin, like I had before. Not only that too, like there's so many features. I'm literally just like, I'm literally an Apple fanboy. So like, just bear with me. So let's say I'm writing a word, my name. Okay. And I want to highlight it easily. I can highlight it with any color I want. So I highlight it with dark green. There you go. Now it's highlighted with dark green. So if I go to my regular notes, so if I go out here and I go to, you know, to B, this is last year, last semester. And I go to my notes for organic chemistry too. Then I search up amines, right? You could see that on the actual lecture itself, I was writing things on the actual lecture. Now a cool feature as well is that if you can't, if you want to, you know, write in a certain area, you could zoom in as much as you want and write super, oh, that's highlighted and write super small. Okay. That's also not good. Let's make it red. And you could write super small. So I could write weaker base. Now, if I zoom out, you could see how small that is now. And I could even make it smaller. Like I said earlier with the square tool where you grab it and you make it even smaller and smaller and smaller or larger and larger and larger. You could literally do whatever you want with it and make your notes as organized as possible. Now, let's say I just wrote something and I, you know, I want to delete it or I deleted something and I wanted to bring it back. Press the undo button. Press the undo button. Undo, 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 undo. Now, a very also a very cool feature, like I said earlier, is that you can find specific notes on the document. Now, Notability is really cool and that it allows you to actually search up your own written notes. So if I wanted to search up, so here, let's say I wrote the word um, George, G-E-O-R-G-E. -E. And I want to search up George. So I search up George. Search. There you go. It's showing me that I wrote George right here. So you can see that notability is really smart and that it actually reads your regular handwriting so you can find out your own notes. All right, so the final thing I'm gonna discuss with notability is that they have a very cool feature, which is the dictation feature. So let's say I were to open up uh, my stats lectures, okay? And I go to, I don't know, let's go to my second lecture. So like I was saying, you could be very organized with the way you write things. And I go to the end of the lecture, okay? And I wanna record exactly what the professor is saying for an exam we have coming up, right? So I press on this feature up here, the dictation, and me writing, Michael, my name you know, is Michael, right? I spelled that wrong. And I press stop. Now, if I come back to the lecture and I want to listen to what was going on and I want to listen to the lecture and me writing down at the same time, if I press play, here, the dictation, and me writing Michael, my name, you know, is Michael. So you can see that it was not only playing what the lecturer said, so in my case, it was literally just playing me talking to the camera, but it also plays what I wrote down at that same time. And that's a really cool feature because if professors don't post their lectures online and they don't record the lectures, you could literally record every single lecture and put it on Notability. All right, so now that we understand exactly how Notability works, I wanna discuss some advanced features of Notability as well as other apps that you could use alongside Notability. So the first thing I wanna discuss is the backup feature. Now, a lot of people, a lot of friends that I know have Notability, but they don't understand that there is an auto backup that you can actually set up. So if you press on the settings at the bottom and you go to auto backup, you can actually back up all your files to something on the cloud. So I personally have it backed up with OneDrive with my school and I can actually access that on my computer at any moment's time. So if, so if I actually open my computer, you can 
could see that I actually have everything that I wrote down on my Notability is automatically backed up every single time while I'm using the app. So today I did some YouTube animation. So if you go here, you can see the animation that I did in the beginning of the video is already backed up and it's already saved for me. So if anything happens to my iPad, I will always have my Notability you know, notes on my computer. And not only that, but I can also access my Notability apps on my phone. And I can access all the notes on Notability right here. So if you're you know, working out or like I said earlier, if you're on a subway or if you're on a train or if you're on a bus, and for some reason you forgot your iPad or your iPad's in your bank and you wanna quickly search something up really quickly, you could literally just pull out the Notability app and you'll be able to find everything right there. Now, another thing with Notability is that you could actually also have passwords on your app. So if you want, you know, only you to be able to access your notes, only you be able to access your app, you could also enable a password for that. You could also add a lot of cool badges, a lot of cool features that you could purchase and that will make your notes even more organized. So this one has cool stickers that you could add. So basically the limits are endless when it comes to Notability. Now let's say I wanted to import a new lecture that just, you know, I got from class. So we'll go to iCloud Drive. So here's iCloud Drive. We go to Waterloo stuff. We go to uh, 30 or 3B term and we open my Notability app. So basically I'm just going to put it side by side like I showed you guys earlier. And I could literally take any lecture. So I go to BioL 355 and I grab this one and we will literally drag it inside. Now I could open my file and I could literally take notes on everything I'm taking in lecture right here. Now let's say I want to add some screenshots into my PowerPoint. So let's say I'll open Safari and then I'll grab any picture I want. Let's say I want to, for some reason, I want to add this picture. I'll literally grab it and drop it. And now there's a picture and now it's automatically always inside my notes. It'll always be there. And I could always navigate between all my notes. I could literally skip to any single note that I want and it'll show me every single note that I have. Now these are very cool features and it'll make things much quicker. Now if you reach this part of the video then you're either thinking of purchasing an iPad and you're ready to go or you're not really sure if you're going to get an iPad yet but you're interested you know in general to see how you could essentially get an iPad for cheaper. So there are two basic iPads that you could get that will work with the Apple Pencil. The first is the iPad Pro which is the one that I have right now. I have the 12.9 inch 2018 model but there's also a newer 2020 model. Now these iPad Pros come in two different sizes. One is the 12.9 inch and the 11 inch. And I'll put the prices of both of them on the screen right here. So you can see how big of a difference it actually changes based on the size. Now there's also the iPad Air, which is 10.9 inches. So it's 0.1 inches smaller than the iPad Pro. It doesn't really matter. That 0.1 doesn't make a difference. And there are very big differences with it. So both of them actually use the Apple Pencil second generation. But there's something with the iPad Pro called ProMotion Display. So what is that? ProMotion Display is essentially the refresh rate of the screen. So the iPad Pro refreshes at 120 hertz. So the unit of hertz is units over seconds. So the iPad Pro refreshes 120 times per second, while the iPad Air refreshes 60 times per second. So exactly what that means is if you're writing a note in Notability or in whatever app, there might be a slight, very minuscule leg on the iPad Air versus the iPad Pro. Now, you usually won't even notice this. I personally don't even notice it myself, but if you are very picky and you want that the quickest refresh rate, you know, it's mainly used for like graphic designers, people that are using the iPad as a main job, then I guess I would say go for the iPad Pro. Now, I would say the iPad Air is a very great option. I would recommend it to most of you, and it's also much cheaper than the iPad Pros. Now, I'll put the prices for all three of them right here so you can see the difference between them. Now, if you still can't purchase the iPad Air because it might be too expensive, I'll show you a quick way that you actually might be able to purchase Apple products in general for a cheaper price. So if I open my computer right here and we scroll to the bottom of the screen, we'll come to this section right here and we'll actually find a section called refurbished and clearance. So we open this section and the thing with this site is that it refreshes every single day or every couple of hours. So the stock availability on the site will change throughout the day. And how this site works is basically you could choose any product. So in our case, we're choosing the iPad. And so you see right now, there's only two iPad accessories. There's the Apple Pencil, the regular one, which is the old generation and the newer one. Already the Apple Pencil is $30 cheaper and the Apple Pencil is also very expensive. Literally, I have no idea why they price it that much, but it's very expensive. So here I can get the Apple Pencil cheaper for $30. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I don't want to get a refurbished product. You know, it might be used, it might be broken, but Apple's refurbished products are actually very, very good. And that if you've ever had Apple Care, you know that once you go to the Apple store, if you end up paying to, you know, get a new, new Apple product or they replace your phone they actually give you a refurbished one they don't give you a new one and that's why it comes in a different box basically the refurbished product they'll take iPhones that have screens broken or anything they'll essentially replace the screen and replace the battery 
So it is essentially a new phone, but they can't put it down as a new phone because technically that would be illegal. So either they'll give it to people with Apple Care or they'll sell it on this website. And I actually told one of my friends about that with the iPad Pro, the 11 inch, and he ended up getting the iPad Pro for $250 cheaper. So if you go on this website and you monitor it every single day, you'll end up finding a product that is cheaper. And I hope that that is useful for you guys if you're thinking of purchasing an iPad. And I hope this video is also very useful and it helped create you know that last budge into purchasing an iPad and helped convince you in that last piece. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing down below. I will most likely make future videos about tech because I do love technology a lot. Also smash that like button down below just like I smashed this iPad right here. Smash that like button. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.